LEGO City Undercover is one of the most loved LEGO games out of the franchise, primarily because it is just like GTA, except minus the blood and uh, PG-13 things that happen in that game. Also, this game's Platinum Trophy features one of the most collectibles out of any other LEGO game, and it is a part of my journey to finish all of them before we hit 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you want to speed up the challenge, then make sure to drop a like subscribe right now. Anyways, LEGO City Undercover has a total of 49 trophies in it. Lots are from story and collectibles, so there isn't many random ones throughout. The story surrounds the main character you play as named Chase McCain and his hunt for Rex Fury, who is quote-unquote leading the crime scene in LEGO City. Also, there is like a love interest sort of thing, but not at the same time. It's kind of weird and our captain totally crashed his ship right into the side of the bridge now that is a safety hazard anyways once you arrive on dry land by the grace of a miracle you meet up with mayor gleason and she debriefs you even more then the first objective begins with you heading to the police station to get settled in once there you meet your partner named frank honey long story short he is like super dumb almost like a child you end up going to the basement also to get your uniform and then have the first puzzle of the game back upstairs lego city undercover uses these little tablets a lot to find things and honestly it's a super easy system you just follow and we found a key which opened the boss's door who was passed out in a donut coma. God, the police stereotype is crazy in this game. Okay, so anyways, now we get the first mission as a police officer, and it has us chase down a bunch of clowns who just robbed somewhere, I guess. You do this by chasing after them at high speeds until completely totaling their car. Then the chase continues on foot, but all clowns are out of shape, so it's easy to catch up. And that was actually only one out of three, so we had to, of course, do it two more times in the same way. And after catching the final one, which had blue hair, Disgusting. We got the first trophy of the day for clowning around. <laughs> Get it? Get it because of the clowns? Oh my god! Also, the idiot boss guy yelled at me on his Android for a hot minute after, and I really don't appreciate it. I know there's no way he can run under a 10 second 40, so I don't want to hear him talk. The next mission then was just more of a blatant tutorial into building and also how to get vehicles. But after we headed into the city, there was four robbers that were just doing robbing things, I guess. And it is now our objective to catch all of them and bring them to justice. Now, this is actually very easy because each of them are on their own, and when multiple men aren't trying to bang me at the same time, I'm totally fine. But this final dude nearly fell off the roof before we saved him, and yet still made him think we we're gonna drop him poor guy lost both his hands though so uh I don't know what the handcuffs will do. And after that, we got the second trophy of the game. We then had to build a ferry to head over to an island for the next mission, and it required 15,000 bricks where I only had 5,000. So this then exposed me to the pain of finding these dang bricks, which are scattered around, and you can find them nearby using the tablet thing. Overall, it's just annoying to get the bricks, but I did do it. And the ferry then took us all the way to the prison island, which is where the next level is. However, we aren't cool enough to get prison keys, I guess, and had to find the inmates' basketball so they would let us in. And the way you get it is by just beating up the other inmates that have it. I now understand police brutality. Also, the basketball we gave to the inmates allowed us to meet this old guy who has the in on how the prison runs, if you know what I mean. He also took us inside to Rex Fury's old cell so we can get info on his escape which is the entire mission's purpose. And you pretty much try to make your way through the prison however you can, ending up finally inside of the warden's office because he has the door to Rex Fury's cell. Now that's a bit suspicious, I'm not gonna lie. And we finally made it to Rex Fury's prison cell, which is in fact about 10 times bigger than the room I am in making this video right now. That is absolutely ridiculous. How does a guy that got arrested while riding a lawnmower get this treatment? In the end, we did find out though that he had used a pickaxe to basically just dig out a massive hole from his cell and walk away from prison. However, that wasn't the end of our search for Rex because we then went to the mines to find a man named Stinky Fletcher. Now, anyone who has the first name Stinky is definitely a force to be reckoned with, so I'll hear him out. And this mines level then had some of the most puzzles out of any level in the game. It is actually kind of insane how many puzzles there was, but low-key, if you played this as a child and actually beat it, you probably gained like IQ points or something. Oh yeah, and there was also also some super cool free fall scenes which Loki slapped today and probably blew children's minds back in 2013. Anyways, we didn't really get anything in the mines after all, but once we left them, Rex Fury just showed up, so I guess we found him. Sadly, he beat us. Uh, he beat us up. And we then got two trophies to help the healing process. Alright, so next level put us in a karate dojo because Rex Fury, I guess, is a master at karate close combat, which is why we of course need to learn that now. It makes sense, okay? But getting inside is a bit complex. All you need to do is the super build, so... Yeah, that's, that's great. That's what I'm saying. Once inside, you meet the leader guy. He then just starts throwing enemies at you because there's no better way to learn than through torture. I did, however, get a throw move and threw some guy into two other guys and got a trophy. After the fighting, we also got granted a black belt and are now a karate master. It's that easy. 
After I left the dojo though, I ended up getting jumped by a ton of Rex's men and it was kind of a bit much. But the real challenge was trying to drive this ridiculously slow and immobile vehicle back to the station without it blowing up. And let's just say it, it was indeed a it was indeed a close call, a, a very close call. But then the mission ended with a trophy, so that's cool. But what's even cooler is the next part of this story, because from here to the end, essentially Chase went full on undercover mode, just like in Fast and Furious, if you can even remember what that movie's plot was. And you then get to act like a getaway driver for the various gangs of the crime world. Honestly, this lifestyle is epic. I got to drive some awesome vehicles, and was even allowed to beat up a bunch of cosplayers. My favorite. This first instance into undercoverness, however, ends with us chasing after some person dressed in all black. I already know they mean business. But the chase was low-key underwhelming because I missed the zipline parkour and it was just sad, especially since the person just waited for me. And that same person also ended up being Chase's love interest in the beginning of the game. And we then received a trophy since the chapter is now over. You then have to rebuild this motorcycle and somehow I just could not find the damn tires for it to save my life. It was a problem, I'm not gonna lie. But once I did, we got to do a time trial race, which is one of the major collectibles for the game. And then we went back undercover and are now trying to rob a bank. But you do it by entering from the sewers, of course. Everyone knows that is the best way. There was a cool laser puzzle here though, which allowed us to get past all of them and then open the vault to the absolutely massive emerald inside. Now I just have to wonder, Chase, where did that emerald go? Now obviously you aren't carrying it, it's not being dragged by you, so where could it possibly be? Anyways, we then had to escape the bank with a giant butt plug in. Also, I apologize for this, but my recording is corrupted for the rest of the story since I did it all in one sitting, so... That's great. But basically, you continued to go undercover, hence the title of the game, LEGO City Undercover. And eventually, you found out that Rex wasn't actually the big boy bad guy. It was instead this rich dude. And the game ends with you going to space, so that's cool. Anyways, here's all the trophies I got from the time of last recording to the end of the Corrupted One. I lost so much footage here, I actually almost cried. But as a wise man once said, never back down, never give up. So I finally switched my recording software over, and it was surprisingly easy to do it a different way. Um, so I ended up having zero issues for the rest of this game. And I'm looking happy inside now. All right, moving on to the second stage past the main story of LEGO City Undercover. It is of course time to do the cleanup. This is also the majority of the game's playtime because there is, I think, 20 districts in the game, which all have numerous collectibles. A grand total of 450 gold bricks, 39 red bricks, 120 vehicles, and 305 people. So overall, we have to collect 914 collectibles on top of the main story. What a day. I began the cleanup by doing all the free play levels over again and getting every single collectible in them. Overall, this wasn't too hard because there is isn't many collectibles within the levels themselves. The only main challenge is getting all four police shield tokens, which are gotten from doing specific activities that are sometimes not obvious at all. And on one of the final levels I was cleaning up, you had to play basketball for one of the collectibles, of course. And I made three buckets in a row since I'm just like LeBron with a stroke and got a trophy. I then got every single police shield token out of the 15 levels a little while after that for another trophy. And before anything else, I made it my sole objective to get every single red brick so I could have as much assistance and extra help with the other collectibles. Sadly, in this game, even with 39 red bricks and not a single one is a detector for collectibles. This is because they have the tablet thingy, which I guess does show the locations, but you have to be near it. It's just not as good. Once I got all the red bricks, though, it was a trophy, of course. So now it's time to really strap into the cleanup and get all the collectibles. LEGO City Undercover, as I already said, has a ton of them, and all the things you do for them are very, very similar. It is the same objective on each district, which of course features puzzles, but there is also a lot of racing with both cars and boats. Overall, this game is still quite enjoyable doing the cleanup, but it did take me like 12 hours straight to complete. The first new trophy in the cleanup I got was done by building all the objects inside of the store that had other collectibles in it. I then got another a while later once I reached 4 billion studs. Now this isn't even hard because of the red bricks I got earlier, but I was still paranoid that I wouldn't reach it. Also, a way to set up races and crime fighting is done by listening in on conversations throughout the districts, and after listening to 20 of them, which is very easy because you do it in some of the main story also, you will get a trophy. And on another instance later on in the cleanup, I was getting frustrated with the flying vehicles because you can't really just jump out, so I was spamming triangle to exit and apparently a car was in my reach, which then gave me a trophy for exiting a helicopter into a car. I then went quite some time without any more trophies, which is sad and devastating to my soul. But I found and built all these big police shield icons, which is a trophy, so that's cool. I then was completely out of bricks, and you have to build like 65 super builds total with bricks in the game, which is also awful. So I was trying everything in my power to get more bricks easily, and ended up just driving into a ton of stuff. This is not a great method, by the way, so don't do it. But I did get the maximum multiplier, and my car went insane mode, which gave me a trophy. 
Later on after, I guess I also visited all of these important statue buildings because I got a trophy for being a tourist. Always fun. And then I was on the last few islands doing the collectibles slowly but surely leaning into the 100% completion. And I received another trophy, but this time for breaking these sculpture thingies. I then finally cleaned up the streets and stopped every single gang in the city. So my last district to complete was actually the Lady Liberty Island in the game. And it's also the easiest by far since it's so small and everything is just sort of shoved into one area. But while here, I finished the final time trial, robbed the last ATM, which is my personal favorite side hustle, and I also completed every single construction thing where you just drill into the floor, and it's great. I then mined the last boulder, built the last super build, and placed my flag conquering the land which isn't mine in the last location. Also, this fire is totally broken and wouldn't get put out by my water. Great game. But I then saved every cat as well, which is a collectible for some reason, even though cats are evil. The final two trophies before 100% completion were gone from saving all the pigs, and then completing all of the free roam parkour section, which by the way sucked more than half the time. And then after buying every single character in the game, I achieved 100% completion of LEGO City Undercover. But we do still have a few trophies left, so uh, th this is kind of awkward. Honestly, I should have just saved that for last, that would have been cool. The first random trophy I got was for using Rex and riding a lawnmower. What a throwback. And then for using the custom character in all eight of my character slots. This was a bit confusing because I thought it meant just eight different people at first, but it literally means the custom icon character. I then had to steal a taxi with a person in it, and then take that same person on the ride of his life doing 10 speed ramps with a guy until a trophy popped. I also rode a rail for a long time because I love grinding, and then sat on a car for 30 seconds while I was moving. Don't try this at home, kids, but if you do, make sure to record it. And then my final trophy was gotten from riding every single fair ride in the game. Loki, I was convinced I had already done this since you quite literally have to ride them for some collectibles, but I guess I missed this one right here. And then the trophy popped in addition to the platinum. So there's the LEGO City Undercover Platinum Trophy. And honestly, I gotta say, that game was fire. Especially considering it came out all the way back in 2013. But even if it released today, I still think it holds up great. Although I am also pretty sure they recently remastered it, or at least made it available on the PS4 and PS5 because the graphics look crazy good, so I think that might be the reason why it looks and plays so well. But either way, it is a W game, and yeah, thanks for watching.